So uh, I'm planning to talk about empirical supermetric inequalities of that convexity. My plan is to explain all the words in uh, the title, explain what I mean in empirical supermetric inequalities and explain what I mean outside convexity, uh, state at least a theorem and say a couple of words about the proof. I hope that I will make it. This is a joint work with uh, Radek, is, uh, is, uh, he's at the uh, University of Warsaw and Peter and Paul that are in University of Missouri. Okay, so before I will explain what I mean empirical supermetric inequalities, let me first say that uh, the supermetric inequalities, uh, the classical supermetric inequality states that among all sets of given volume, the one with the smallest perimeter is, uh, is the ball. And uh, there are a bunch of inequalities of the same type if one would replace the uh, perimeter with some other functional. And uh, many of them, I will mention several inequalities of this type. Several will also imply the classical one, but I will call all of them as uh, isoparametric inequality. So I want to start, I, I will try to give an example of what I mean empirical isoparametric inequality. So I will start by stating another inequality of this form. This is the Brunikovsky inequality. So we have uh, uh, two sets, K and L in a rent. And uh, I will write with uh, K star and L star, the Euclidean ball, ball with the same volume, volume as K. And uh, an, a way to see the uh, Brunikovsky inequality is the following. I take K plus L and here plus, I mean the Minkowski summation. And if I will take the volume of this, uh, uh, of this object in, in Rn, then this is bigger or equal that if I will place K with a ball with the same volume and L with a ball of the same volume. And uh, if you uh, spend a few seconds, you will retrieve the most familiar to, uh, to uh, most of you, to all of you, the uh, version of the Brunikovsky inequality. So this is the Brun. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this uh, you can read it that among all sets that have the same volume, the volume of the Minkowski sum is minimized when we have both. Okay, that's also one way to express it. So now I would like to randomize this inequality to make an empirical version of this. And so what I mean, I mean that uh, if uh, X is uh, <coughs> a random vector, so this is in a rand that it is picked uniformly from K, let's say K is, uh, is a nice set. And so <coughs> let's say compact and uh, of positive volume, then I pick randomly X from it, and then uh, I take x1, x capital N independent copies. And uh, now I create a random polytope. I will write it as Kn. And this is the convex hull of uh, the points that I get. So now <clears throat> instead of seeing K, I see the convex hull of points that I, I pick independently and randomly from uniformly from K. And now I take this Kn. And then I take Lm, this I mean that I take points uniformly from L and I take M of them. I compute the volume of this object. And now I will take the same thing, but now from the ball, N points from the ball of the same volume. And uh, also M points from uh, the ball of the same volume like L, I take the, this random polytopes, I take the sum, that's also a random object. And I'm claiming that this inequality holds, but now we have to be a little bit careful. These are random objects. So for every alpha, the probability that uh, this is bigger than that, smaller or equal than the probability is bigger than that. So uh, I have some dominance in distribution. Of course, since I have this, I can, uh, I can write the moments. I have uh, also all moments. So I can write that the expectation of the volume of Kn plus Lm is bigger equal 
than the expectation of k n star plus l n star. Okay. So what is uh, what is uh, the advantage here? Let's say uh, that k and l are convex. So uh, if there are if there are convex, then uh, let's say the picture is if this is k. I take n points. This is the convex hull. So this is the k n. And if I would take more and more points, this will converge to uh, to k. So if uh, if I will send n to infinity. Then uh, by the Loblaw's numbers, this will converge to this object. Sorry, this is almost surely, so there's no expectation. And this will converge to k plus l. So I will retrieve the uh, Brumikovsky inequality. So the empirical one. It's, it's an inequality that it is not the Brumikovsky inequality because these objects here are not balls. They are just uh, some, uh, some polytopes that have been created randomly by, by sampling from balls. And uh, when, uh, when uh, <clears throat> we take too many points, then uh, we will approach K and L, and at the, at the end, we will retrieve the Brumikovsky inequality. But of course, we have retrieved the Brumikovsky inequality in the case that we have convex sets. Because if I start with a non convex set, of course, uh, when I will take the Kn, I will go outside and uh, I will not get uh, on the left hand side the volume of uh, the convex scale of K plus L. Okay, so this is, uh, this is uh, what I'm writing here. This is the empirical. Empirical form of Brumikovsky. And this is a result that we had with Peter in uh, a few years back. And it is a project that uh, we have, and also with help of other people in the last decade, to randomize several isoperimetric inequalities. And that's the version of, uh, of the Brumikovsky. OK. As you see, one of the problems is that this is uh, very much related to convexity, or we have some, some restrictions because of convexity. We retrieve the Brumikovsky inequality for convex set. And this is not because we sample from convex set. The proof works if we sample for everything. But it is the, the way that we have set up our, our approximation. We, we approximate with convex set. OK, in order to, to say how, how we try to to go outside convexity, I will uh, introduce the LP centroid bodies. So the centroid body goes back to Blaske and uh, Buzman and Petty on, uh, on uh, the 20th century, beginning and uh, mid 20th century. So what is the centroid body? Let's say that we have K uh, a convex set to begin with. And then uh, we define the, the Z of K. I will define it by defining the support function. The support function is the distance, the supported type plane of a convex set from the, dis from, from, from the origin. And uh, I define it in this way. This is the normalization that I, that I choose. Okay, so this is, uh, as you see, also a symmetric convex set by Minkowski inequality. And uh, Busman and, uh, and, and Petty have proved also uh, isoperimetric inequalities for the volume of other parameters of this, of this set. It was Ludwig on, uh, on the 90s that uh, extend this to, uh, to LP centroid bodies. So this is the centroid body. The reason that's called the centroid body is that the boundary of this object com is consists by all the centroids. If we just consider uh, half lines, if we restrict on half lines, and uh, 
the LP centroid bodies that I promise it is the definition is now this is the ZP of K. I will take the P here and then I will take one over P power, of course, again by Minkowski and Valdi. This is uh, this defined um, a symmetric convex body. Okay, so it was uh, what about isoparametric inequalities? So inequalities. It was uh, proved by uh, Ludwig and Zang. In uh, ninety-seven, that uh, if uh, if uh, for every p, and if k is a star-shaped body, so same definition, but now uh, k is a star-shaped body, the zp of k is bigger equal than the zp of k star with the notation that I introduced. Okay, k star. I, I remind you, this uh, it's just the ball of the same body. And this, how I wrote it, no, I wanted to wrote the dual one, so it is like, and uh, here k polar is all x is that x uh, z is less than equal to one, five z. That's a dual ball. Okay, and this is a star. So this is what uh, Ludwig and Zhang prove on uh, 97, and then Ludwig, Yang, and Zhang. In uh, 2000, they proved also the dual inequality that uh, this is minimized on the balls, um, all uh, star sets with the same innovation. Okay, so um, let me say that if K is a symmetric convex body. Then uh, the z infinity of k, so if I will send uh, uh, p to infinity, then I will just retrieve the, um, the, the support function. So if also, let's say that I have k equals one, then this is just uh, the, uh, the k or else it is. Uh, no, I don't need even that. I don't need even volume. So I will, I will retrieve the volume k, so this one, so this one, it reduced to when p equals infinity in k equals minus k convex case implies that k polar is less than k star uh, polar, which is nothing else than the Santaloy inequality. And this justified to call it this isoparametric inequality because uh, Sandalo proved that this is equivalent to the fine isoparametric inequality, actually a uh, way more strong question. Okay, so these are the inequalities about the ZPs. And uh, there are empirical versions of these inequalities that we uh, done together with Peter. So empirical versions. So what is the empirical version? Now I want you uh, to empirically understand the ZP body. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna again take X1, Xn, independent copies from M, from K. And uh, I define the HZPN uh, of K to be one over N, some i from one through capital N, xi scalar theta to the p and one over p. So this is uh, really, if I have, if I see the random variable uh, uh, x scalar theta that I pick independent, uh, independent copies in order to empirically understand what is the p moment of, uh, of this object. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, the empirical, uh, the empirical object and the theorem that uh, we proved with Peter. So this is P into the bar of 2012. It is that the ZP N of uh, K is bigger or equal than the ZP N of K star. 
So it's not only that uh, the ZP bodies is minimized on the ball, but all for every, all, every number of samples, the empirical one, it is minimized when we sample from the ball. And of course, again, by the law of large numbers, when P goes to infinity, this goes again to the, the volume of ZP of K and here to the ZP, the volume of Z, uh, ZP of K polar. And this is the uh, ludwig zang inequality. Also for the dual one, uh, we proved with, um, um, uh, we proved with, uh, together with uh, uh, Dario Cordero, Cordero uh, Mathieu Fradelisi, me and uh, Peter, that was uh, six, seven years ago, that uh, the same holds true also for the dual inequality. So when, uh, uh, so this is in, in a distribution, and let me write it this way in expectation, the ZPN of, uh, of K polar is less than equal to the expectation of ZPN K star polar. And when N again goes to infinity by the Lovelace numbers, we retrieve the ludwig young inequality. But the point is that uh, this holds true for every for every number of samples. And of course, uh, uh, for every number of samples, this cannot be retrieved by the usual inequality. It is something, uh, something that holds true with, uh, uh, in a, with some probability. So uh, it's not only that, uh, let me say one remark about the samples. It is one can sample with respect to any measure as long as we have enough integrability to write these things. And the uh, same holds true, just uh, one replace instead of the, when it is the K star, one replace the, the decreasing rearrangement of uh, the density uh, instead of uh, the ball with the same volume. Okay, so one more, more thing before I will mention the new result and uh, try to explain what is the outside convexity. It is that these things we, on, on, on these results, we have the random operator approach. So what we have, it is that we create a random operator. X1, Xn are the samples, so are independent. So that's a matrix with independent columns. When I see this operator, it goes from R capital N to R small n. And then we hit this operator with a convex set in R capital N. And then in this way, we, we create a random, uh, a random set. So in this set, in this sense, the ZPN of K, the empirical ZP body, is nothing else than the, uh, the, the, the random object that we create if we hit with this operator, the B to N, where Q it is just a conjugate. And if I will take the polar, I can I can see also, I can see it also as uh, the uh, inverse image of, uh, of the transpose operator of BPN. Okay. So why 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 this uh, this object has been uh, it's been a question for many years that uh, this inequality is everything that I wrote about the LP centroid bodies and the definition, I said that these are convex sets. I had to, of course, because of Minkowski inequality, I have, of course, write that P is bigger or equal than one. And uh, all these inequalities holds true on this regime. But uh, it was a conjecture that these inequalities must hold true also when P is less than one. Again, the problem is that uh, the, when p is less than one, then uh, you lose the convexity, and many of the of the of the techniques of the tools that are available just don't work. So the question is how to prove the Ludwig-Yang inequality or the Ludwig-Yang-Zang inequality. I will focus on the Ludwig-Zang inequality for p less than less than one. 
This has been a, a question that has been asked actually for many people and puzzled us for uh, many years, mainly because it looks like the, uh, the first step that one needs to be done in order to, to expand these techniques on the dual theory. So uh, let me define the, the ZP body for P less than one. So let me uh, give the definition. So I define the ZP body as a support function. So let me recall the definition here. But uh, here I'm writing support function. This is a convex set. So I will, I will prefer to write it the norm of the dual. So I will write here theta. And then I will write the norm of the dual. And the norm of the dual, I will write it as uh, one over the radial function because uh, again, the norm it is very much about convex sets. So let me write it ZP K polar of theta to be the reciprocal of this. Rho stands for the radial function. So now. This way I have defined it, but it is not, uh, it's not wise to use the, the polarity because this corresponds to duality. So we just use another simple polarity. Okay, so now I have defined a, a, a star shape set. So this is a star shape set. And the definition that I'm using here, it is due to um, uh, Yaskin and Yaskina at the beginning of 2000. There are many approaches uh, to the ZP bodies for P between zero and one. It is also related to intersection bodies that was uh, done by, uh, it's very much related to the work of Kodolsky with uh, the Busman petty problem. And uh, the, the Calderon and Kodolsky also uh, uh, use this definition for interpolation results. And uh, Harbour and Ludwig, they use just different notation in order to introduce the LP intersection bodies and they're led them to valuations. The, the conjecture that uh, the ZP bodies, the volume at least must be minimized, uh, uh, maximized when, uh, when we have a ball, it was, it was been uh, discussed by many people uh, to us. And uh, uh, with this notation, I will first introduce the empirical one, the empirical ZP rhombus. So now the empirical uh, Z1, it is, the definition is, uh, is, uh, is the same. Um, as, uh, as before, so rho of ZP, okay, theta, it is uh, one over N, some I from one to N, I, uh, theta to the P, and to the minus one of the p, where x, x1, again, xn are independent copies, uniformly from k. And uh, again, uh, one can see it that this is the inverse image, the pre-image of the transpose. So in this way, we can write it, that this is n to the one of the p, xn to minus t, BPN, but now the BPN is a non-convex set since P is on zero one, okay? So let me write down what is the theorem. So the theorem uh, of, uh, this is a Damsack PBS as, uh, as in the first page. So for every P on zero one, the in expectation also we have in distribution and also for other functionals other than volume. So the conjecture inequality holds true. And actually uh, this has nothing to do that sampling from a star state body we can sample for with respect to any measure as long as we have enough integrability. And of course now as n goes to infinity again, by the law of large numbers, this gives the conjecture in equality. Yeah. 
And uh, I think I will, uh, I have one more minute. I will, uh, let me say a couple of words about the proof. Now, since uh, this is a, a pre-image of a non-convex set, things are not working, but there is, uh, there is a nice formula of uh, Nayaran's codes. which says that uh, the volume of a, of a, of a section of uh, the BP ball, even if P is between zero and one, can be written, I will not write, uh, uh, or the formula can be written as a mixture of reciprocal uh, of, of sets that depends on the mixture. And uh, the mixture it is with respect to uh, distribution that uh, are related to Q-stable random variable. So after you have this, then, uh, uh, then uh, one can use the results that we had with Dario and Mathieu about uh, uh, volumes of uh, random sets, uh, volumes of polars of random sets, and uh, this uh, this uh, sets uh, then then one can initiate the the, the machinery that exists that be, that depends on Braska Plumbiger and uh, some results of uh, of priests about uh, rearrangements, and then uh, one can uh, can finish the proof. I was not able to uh, to, to come to the meeting, but one of my co-authors Paul is there, and he will present a, a poster. And the details of the proof that I had no time to, to discuss uh, uh, will be on the poster. So I think I will stop here. I'm out of time, I think, right? And then uh, and uh, and Paul can uh, can tell you more details. Thank you very much. <laughs>